This is Joseph Coco. I'm at MochaFest 2014. I'm here on behalf of Becca Hilburn's Art Process Blog, Keep on Trucking Natto Soup. And if you could introduce yourself, please. Sure. My name is Sarah Woolley. I am an illustrator and comic book artist. Um, I'm also an author. Um, and let me just go ahead and start with my book. Yeah. Sure thing. So, this is Los Pirineos, the mostly true memoirs of Esperancita Gomez. And it's a collaborative book with myself and my mom. We co authored it based on a grant from the National Association of Latino Arts and Culture. And it is about my family's immigration from Colombia to the United States. And it's book one out of three. And it has to do with a little girl who um, is immigrating and has to go into hiding to be able to get out of the country. And so it's a very real, current story for a lot of people. Um, so, sorry, when I'm on camera I lose track. That's fine. It's certainly beautifully illustrated. Thank you. Uh, what uh, brought you to uh, producing a book on immigration? Did you find that there, there weren't many at the time or that it would, like it would help younger people? Right. Um, I, well, it's a passion project for sure um, because it is my family's story. Um, but there's a huge gap in the children's literature market um, for books about Latinos, books about minorities at all, um, and specifically books for girls. And so, you know, the story that my mom had to tell was very compelling, and I felt like it would reach a lot of young people who don't have an outlet to be able to find themselves within children's literature. Um, as of the last statistic I saw, only 3% of children's books had a Latino main character. Okay. And so. that, was liter that was published in the New York Times after two weeks ago. Right. So, and we're in 2014. So you're catering to incredibly underserved markets, basically. Yeah. yeah. Right. I mean, and I'm sure it's just it's a story you wanted to tell in the first place. So absolutely. So why not produce something for them that can help them out? Absolutely. Um, so you've produced some other things. You'd mentioned that. Uh, well, so it's for a completely different market. Right. This is Fate Company. Fate Company is a sci-fi supernatural thriller. So very different. Not a children's book. Um, and this literally came out this week. Okay. And, um, and it's in collaboration with an author named Mark Boutros. And we're actually going to be having a launch party on April 26th at Enigma Bookstore in Queens at 7 p.m. That's great. So if yeah. you're in the New York area, you should definitely check it out. Um, hopefully the videos will be posted by then. <laughs> Even though this is a very different subject matter, the art process is the same. These are all hand-drawn on watercolor paper. Um, and then I use a process of digital collage of hand-dyed papers and fabrics and basically any texture that I am drawn to to be able to create these uh, really lush palettes. Right, so it's kind of a hybrid between traditional watercolor and digital. Absolutely, uh, but that's a good way to describe it. You're heavily inspired from physical things when you're working digitally. You're not digitally painting, essentially. Exactly. Wow, you said that so much better than I ever have. <laughs> I've interviewed a lot of artists. So, um, I, I wanted to discuss briefly uh, how, firstly, are both your books self-published? Um, they are. Both of my books are self-published. I am in the process of shopping Los Pinineos around the traditional publishers okay. to be able to um, have access to... When you self-publish a children's book, that limits your audience to a certain degree. And right. I'm trying to get this book into schools, into libraries, into the hands of as many kids as possible. So I am trying to go the traditional publishing route. Right. Um, and so I'm in the process of shopping it around. It's got some really positive feedback, so I have some very high hopes for it. Um, I definitely think it helps when you're working with watercolor if you're trying to target a, a publisher to kind of digitally master it the way you're doing because I imagine it makes it much more lush and easier to get uh, the effect you want on a, a web press rather than just straight watercolor that's been scanned in. Sure. Um, so that's, I, I think that was a great decision on your part. Thank you. Thank you. Feel free to take a look. Here you go. Uh, um, so I also wanted to ask, uh, considering that you're self-published, how you, you're obviously trying to get into libraries, so you're are you're considering speaking at schools? Have you oh, done completely. that? Yeah, I mean, I used to teach um, in a not-for-profit that was focused on working with uh, immigrant minority children in Bushwick, Brooklyn. Okay. And so I have a 
lot of experience speaking directly to groups of kids. I mean, that's pretty easy for me. Right. And I love doing author visits and season visits and then working directly with children. So I'm really looking forward to being able to do more of that. Okay. Um, and you're contacting the school board systems and asking if I you can set up visits? I and teachers directly and talk about my book and see, you know, if they would like me to come in and talk to their students. Usually yeah. I get a very And positive. it's local schools or you're trying to get schools outside of the state as well and uh, seeing if they'll put you up in a hotel or something along those lines? Well, local right now, but yes, I would okay. love that to happen. I'd love to be able to travel for it and, and, and all of that. So I'm all in good time. Yes, certainly. Uh, do you have any other means that Do you have any other means that you're using to try to uh, reach out to to your audience? I know it's a little bit difficult because maybe nine to thirteen year olds aren't necessarily on the internet by themselves, and they wouldn't know how to seek out such a thing. So if they happen to be walking around at a convention with their parents, that's wonderful. But for every other day of the year, how how are you finding it's best to reach your your target audience? I do kids con in the Bronx. That's a good one. Okay. Um, so any sort of children's convention I'll do, library days I'll do, yeah. um, but in the majority I'm reaching out to parents, right. parents put it in the hands of the kids, um, but that I makes think sense. once we hit this, you know, once it's published by a book company, we can start talking about how do we market it to They're going to, yeah, they're going to be marketing it for you and you're not going to have to worry about all these things. Exactly. Yeah, unfortunately it seems like that's the way to target a younger audience right now. You almost have to go through a major publisher, but... <laughs> I'm, I'm uh, glad to get your insights on that, though. Is there anything else you want to promote? Where can we find your comics online? Oh, you can find them at my website. So I will go ahead and give you something to zoom in on right here. Okay. That's me. All right, and that's where your comics are posted. You also that's where have everything's posted. Illustrations. And if we want to contact you for permissions, you can everything. Do well, yep. Yeah, please be in touch. Okay. Yep. Uh, and finally, would you have any uh, advice for a fellow uh, kids comics artist who's considering coming to Mocha Fest for the first time? Do it. It's great. Um, okay. Draw every day. Yeah. Whether you are sick or well. Yeah. If if a child sees you drawing behind a table, I think they're much more interested to engage you and say, "What are you doing?" That's you right. know. And if you're not drawing behind the table, you're talking to people, reaching out, and being friendly. You're not sitting here and. and Playing with your cell phone you. or, yeah, yes. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. certainly well, good advice. advice. It's simple, but it's good advice. Sure. <laughs> All right, well, I hope you have a good Mocha Fest. Thank you thank very much you for so the much. interview. All right, thank you.